So welcome back. We're looking forward to continue in Patek Tesvav or Igeres Tesvav, this 15th epistle. We're holding on 242. This is the third class, I believe it's the third class, on this unique epistle. I say unique, it's one of the lengthier ones of Igeres HaKadosh. This is the Patek which the Al-Terebbe, despite time and again, from the very beginning of Kuti Amarim for that matter, points out and accentuates the the uh, spirit of the ten midas, the ten spheres. In the third chapter already he has, of course it comes before the al Rebbe, but the al Rebbe underscores how this is the makeup of the neshama, this is the DNA of the neshama. In the third chapter of Lukuti Amorim, the very first part of Tanya, the first segment of Tanya, the al Rebbe speaks about the neshama, and in the, the message in Second chapter, this is a chelik, the neshama of the yid is a chelik of the kami mal mamash, which is part of a kodesh baruchu. <clears throat> but in the very beginning of the third, he says it's not just a one beam of light, godly light, not only godly light, but an actual part of a kodesh baruchu. But more so in the beginning of the third chapter, he says that these ten, these, this neshama is comprised of ten spheres because it reflects the way it's on high. In Eilam HaTzilus, where the Neshama basically comes from, there's the Ten Sviris, Shenishtal Shalom Mehem. It evolves from there. Thus, the Neshama also has the Ten Sviris. And in that very chapter, the Altar Rebbe, in the third chapter of Lukuti Amorim, it's a click away, as we'll just note momentarily, <clears throat> that in, in uh, the Altar Rebbe literally gives the X-ray of the experience of the Neshama, how it its cognitive faculties function because it's a godly soul, and of course a godly soul uses its godly, its faculties, its intellectual faculties in a godly manner, meaning to say it intellectualizes godliness, and then it has the set of midas, which is the emotions, Al-Tarebigo starts with Ava, Yira, you know, it's corresponding to Chesed and Gvura, which is Ava and Yira, Again, an x-ray of the experience of the neshama, the godly soul, the nefesh kis exclusively. But yet, in that very chapter, he doesn't elaborate on the other spheres all the way till Malchus. He says these are the anofim, these are the branches of chesed and gvuro. So the other five, he says, which of course they are the branches of chesed and gvuro. It's explained in so many places that it's easy to understand and appreciate why they're the branches, but... Right away, the, the, these are the anofim. He doesn't uh, elaborate, he doesn't articulate what the expression of Tiferes, Netzach, so even though later in Tanya he does mention Tiferes and other Midas, but yet this chapter, which is the fourth segment, al Terebbe devotes a significant majority of this chapter of telling us exactly describing and depicting the expression of every, depicting the Midah and the expression of every Midah, how it expresses itself in the natural interactions one has with a, another party, if it's a master and a pupil and so on and so forth. And then he right away brings it over to our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And of course there it's the godly expression, the godly soul expressing itself in all these, all its ten faculties. In this chat, in this he gets, that's where the Alter Rebbe, for the first time, becomes so uh, specific, in other words, in explaining every single mito, every single faculty from the Chochma, Bina, the Das, as he concludes this chapter over here with the Das. And then, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hayim, and Malchus, in much, much detail. And as such, this becomes a fundamental chapter. Anyway, you swing it. This is where we know so much about the uh, the expression of these fa- ten faculties which we have. And for that matter, of course, the Nefshah Bahamis also has its te- set of ten. And it expresses itself again, this which is primarily bodily, animalistic, even, and so on. The Avayda of the is to transform the Nefshah Bahamis, it should be an ally and serve as a uh, conduit to the Nefshah Likis. That's the overall Aveda, based on the famous Mishnah, Vahavta Sashem Lekecha Becholovavcha. The Mishnah says, Beshnei Yitzarecha, with both your Yitzarecha. That's the overall mandate, as we know it. Yisava Kodesh Baruch Hu, Lisa Lekdira Betachtainim, he takes the Holy Neshama and puts it into a body, and the Nefshah Bahamis, and it has that mandate. But focusing on the Nefshah Likis, 
the Alter Rebbe in this very chapter mm, are, are, are specifies with with much detail and specificity the characters, the expressions of all the ten spheres. So this, as such, also becomes a very lengthy. Could even be it's no, it's, it's a, from all the certainly you know we have the famous Chaf, also a very lengthy chapter. But Igeres Hakodesh Tezvav is one of the lengthiest lengthier chapters in Igeres Hakodesh. Indeed, and probably even the whole time, one of them for sure. So we were holding in the Avu Mikol Mokayim. We read a few a few lines here, um, but let's just try to get into it. And we'll start from the the uh, period which is about ten lines from the top. The line begins Bechaimer, and we were we'll begin from Avu Mikol Mokayim Zakadai So what are we talking about? I always have this kind of uh, how much should we utilize the present class in recapping the previous and it's really not fair to take maybe even any time because it's really a quick way as I was mentioning earlier wherever you're watching it but there's an advantage of the original website uh, to besides the fact the way it's set up and really pretty much in a kind of more organized in, in, a, in a way that uh, easy to follow the text but again wherever you're watching it the name, namely the advantage of the original website that's Tanya Online, one word, dot com, TanyaOnline.com, is because it has all the previous classes lined up. So when one wants to know, so if you're following, of course you know what where we're holding basically, but if you're new or you didn't follow this particular Igetis, this particular letter, this particular epistle, so it's a click away and the, the most recent ones are on the top. So the first top two is this Igetis. Of which began Tezvav, and we mentioned also Igeres Hakodesh is distinct in all the previous segments because the previous segments are every chapter is sequential to the previous. The entire setup of these segments are sequential, as opposed to here Igeres. It's letters written to different communities or different focusing on different matters, which Alter felt he had to address them, even though, as we mentioned so many times, every Igeres of the Alter Rebbe as a Nasi. Is there for posterity for all of Am Yisrael, particularly those who get us, which made it into Tanya Kadisha, the Holy Sefer of Tanya, which is comprised of five segments, as we know, corresponding to Chamisha Chom Shetayda. We mentioned this is the Teda Shemik Sav, known to be the Teda Shemik Sav of Teda Sachsidus. So um, the Geras Hakodesh, not all the Al Tereb's letters entered into the Geras Hakodesh, understandably so. The Al Tereb has a whole set of the Geras Hakodesh. Uh, of the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe's correspondence over the years, but thirty-two, uh, the exact yeah, thirty-two of the get of the Alter Rebbe's letters made into Tanya and Tanya, and again it wasn't just arbitrarily, understandably so. It was with much precision. And a lot of it, the Alter Rebbe's children, which were each one was a giant on his own, were part of the setup of the Tanya. What went in to this to say for that Tanya? So of course this is part of the Holy Tanya, and again the message for every single yid throughout all generations, for posterity, and again, for every single year, as generally, al Rebbe mentioned, Chesidus is Nachlas HaKlal, particularly we talk about the magnum opus of the al Rebbe, which is a sacred Tanya Kadisha. So, <clears throat> in the, the, the reason I say this, uh, the uh, I will just mention again, we had a, a pretty much of an elaborate presentation of the whole backdrop of Igeres HaKadosh in the beginning of Yud, which is five back, the Yud of the uh, Igeres HaKadosh Yud, again, the Igeres HaKadosh being the fourth segment, Tanya, we're talking about the Igeres HaKadosh Yud, we had a general, a little more of a elaborative presentation on the whole backdrop of Igeres HaKadosh, which is a click away. We don't have to take time to mention it again. It's really a click away, the first of the fifth, uh, the tenth Igeres, the tenth epistle. So, the previous, again, Tanya online, one word, dot com, and if you're, so, so, what does it mean Avo Mikol Mokim? So let's try to do this really, really um, succinctly. The Al Terebe speaks about Avram Avinu's expression of Vanechi Alfa Really, take the time to, to 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 see the previous classes if you want to really get the understanding of the present today's class. But very briefly, the Rebbe picks up on this with Avram Avinu says Vanechi Afer Vaefer, and he says in the end of the day every year. By definition, is connected to the on high because he has he or she has a chelik of kavim al mamash. It's not only connected; it's so relevant. We have the ability to appreciate the on high. The Torah says, "V'yadaita hayayim ashavetsa lavecha ki Hashem lo'elikim." You could know, know his real intimate knowledge. Remember the Alter Rebbe in the third chapter, third chapter of Lukot Yamar, this which we 
earlier mentioned, speaks of the difference of Chochma Bina Das. Man could really know Gera Shemo Ikim, matters of their creator. How is that possible? How could a created entity, created being, know anything, anything about creator? The infinite creator. The answer is we have part of the creator within ourselves. And therefore we have the ability to know Hashem. Of course, like the Alder Amam writes, in the end of Mishnah Terikifikayach Adam, how much Hashem allows the window to be open from on high. <clears throat> Sometimes it's like it says, Noida Basha Orim Baila, the famous Pirush, Kol Echad Vachad of Fim Shem Meshire Belibe, how much they invest in this relationship with Akush Borko, Hashem pulls open the window more that they can have more of an understanding and a appreciation of the godly reality, but in the overall, by default, every single year, because we have a chedig of the kam yimal, part of a kosh baruch us, we have the ability to actually appreciate and a, a profound understanding in the reality of the Creator, because we have part of the Creator within ourselves. And again, there's a few details the Altarebbe mentioned, is it equal to every single neshama, but in the end of the day, the Altarebbe says, by every neshama, by definition, can have an understanding. V'yadai tahayayim, ha'shavei salavecha, ki Hashem lovikim. Yet, Abraham Avinu says, together with that, he says, not to think for a moment that we really, really can grasp the unhigh, the way the unhigh is in its full glory, in its full manifestation. And he says the difference is like ash to a, to a beautiful uh, tree before it was burnt. The ash is the same substance of the tree. It is the substance of the tree but can you compare the two? Of course you cannot. To a beautiful, like the Altarebbe Lashen, Nechmod Lemare, Betev Lemaichel, the beautiful tree, fruit tree, or whatever it is, any type of tree, how beautiful it is in comparison to the same substance of the tree after it's burnt, the actual ash. So it is, is it the same substance? Yes, it is the substance of the tree. Yet together, there is no comparison. That's Avram's message, even though Avram Avinu, as the famous word in Sefer Aboyer, Om Ramidas HaChesed, Midas HaChesed, turned to Hashem and says, the day Abraham Avinu came onto earth, I am already substituted, I don't need to do my job, because Abraham Avinu was Chesed par excellence, Avo, which is again Chesed par excellence, he loved Hashem, he loved people, he loved connecting people to Hashem, he was the, the energy of kindness, um, and the iconic kindness, which it represents for that matter, the Chesed of Atzilus, and this is the message of, this is that message. Om Ramidus HaChesed, Miyayim, from the day Abraham Avinu came into, into being, I am completely taken over by his, in other words, I don't have anything to do. This is again the message that is of the Sefer Aboyer. So he par excellence represented the Chesed, the Avo, on high. But nonetheless, says Abraham Avinu, it's not, it's not, in no form or fashion is it really similar to the unhigh, the way the unhigh is manifest unhigh. And this is what he says. Again, you got to see the previous classes, but let's go into it now where we're holding today. I would think, we're repeating a few of these lines over here. I would think that the midas of the yid, or in, in, if it's in this case, Avram of Venus Avo, Avram of Venus Midas, which again is a Merkava to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a chariot to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. you got to see the previous class, we've mentioned this many times. The Ramitz of Yaakov are called Merkava to Lukus, which is, again, we, we took the time to explain it all in the previous class, and periodically we had this expression, Merkava, of the Rebbe has it a few times in Lukuti Amori, that they were completely subservient to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and their Midas represented were the, the supreme Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So one would think that their, the Midas of the Yid, the Midas of the Nisham of the Yid, even of Abraham Avinu. But generically, the Midas of the Nisham of every Yid is main, the Sub Midas of Yid is are similar to the Supreme Midas of the Kosh Barko. Well, as there, Abraham Avinu clarifies that I am earth and ash. And he goes on with the, the Alter Rebbe goes on with the explanation what Abraham Avinu mean with this. We did this pretty much orally last week, but here the Alter Rebbe writes, uses, uh, does, it continues with it in in the following lines over here, explaining this message of Abraham Avinu. The what did Abraham Avinu meant, mean when he said, Of course, there's context, this natural pirush, or the simple pirush that is. We mentioned it last week. 
he felt that he was a bit audacious, arguing with Hashem, with the famous story of Zdeim and Amir, again we mentioned last week, never to forget, whenever you learn about any other Pirush on a Pasuk, never to forget the Pshut Yishol Mikra, it's important for that matter, to remember what the Pshat of the Pasuk is. We mentioned it again last week, again, Avraham Avinu was, felt that he was pushing the envelope a bit too far with the Baruch Hu, and his famous uh, dialogue with the Baruch Hu regarding Zdeim and Amir, and he says, but in this Pirush, the Al Rebbe is explaining the Kemei what is the, 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 the what is that terminology? In other words, of Ramavinu demonstrating his bittel, his subordinates to Kodesh Baruch Hu, using the terminology it wasn't just a general term, earth and ash, which the human mind understands that it's an expression of humility. But no, there was pre- precision in Avram's expression. The Kemei Shaifer, most of us, most of us, and Yisrael, just like the ash, is the very core of the fire, which is, of the wood, excuse me, of the tree of the wood, which is burned, which is consumed. Before it was burnt, it was comprised of the four elements, fire, air, water, and dust. And Gimli say this, When you think about the four elements, the Aish is the happening part, Ruach as well, Mayim as well. Ofer is the lowest because not only lowest in, in the space where the Ofer is, but it's a symbol that it down to the down to the earth. In other words, it's the lowest expressional vitality from all the four. Even if you think about the, the Ofer is categorically inanimate, the Aish is different. Water is for sure different. Even though water is also part of the Daimim family, if you will, but nonetheless, water is vitality. Can't compare water to dust or to earth, and so to air and fire it makes everything happen. It makes so much happen, that is. So when you think about the happening part of the tree, is the Eishrach Mayim part of the tree. Now, it's not just, just comparing. When you say something happening, in comparison to offer, of course, that's the happening part as opposed to the offer. No, but every part of Ilm Hazel, like the Alter Ramam, famously writes in his Yad Chazaka, in his Mishnah Teira, that every part of Ilm Hazel, this physical world, is a combination of these four elements, Eish, Ruach, Mayim, Offer. The difference is how much of the dosage does it have of the Eish? Or of the ruach, or of the mayim of the offer. Again, it's worth it to see the famous chapters in the the Ramam in Hilchas Yisaidi Atayda. So the tree, when it stood in its full full image and full glory, if you will, what was predominantly present and <clears throat> and expressive, namely, is the Eish Mayim Ruach dimension of it, a lively, fully lively tree, branches, leaves, the fruit, of course. <clears throat> so when the fire burns this tree, so the Eish Maim Ruach, Chalfu Vahochalahem, goes away. Exchange is literally translated and goes away. And the Kol of Oshan, and they're consumed in the smoke. Ami Yizhav and Mark What is the smoke? The smoke is <clears throat> what is created from their combination. Kenite as it's known. This is science that the smoke, that's why you find different types of smoke of different elements which are burnt. Because the whole smoke is the Eish Mayim Ruach, which is in this object, in this <clears throat> item, for example, which is burnt. And based on the Eish Mayim Ruach dimension of that item, <clears throat> of that object, that's how the smoke appears. And that's the distinction between one type of smoke, its smell, its thickness, and so on and so forth. And this is what, because this is what the smoke is all about. The smoke is comprised from the combination of the Eish Mayim Ruach of the object, in this case, the tree. And what is what is burned, and it comes doesn't disappear completely, but it's reduced to ash. Everything which you light, which you ignite, which you consume, becomes ash. So this ash is not just randomly somewhat. This is the Yisaid Hadalid. This is the fourth element within the makeup of the tree. Because Shahayu Ba'etz, which was again embedded in the tree. This ash, that's the offer, earth dimension of the tree. For that matter, that's why Brahma Venus said it together. Offer Ba'efer, because the Efer is the offer dimension of the Eishar Ma'im Ruach, 
<coughs> of that very tree. So the Eishmaim Ruach Chol Vavah are completely consumed, or better yet, subsumed into the smoke. The makeup of the smoke is the Eishmaim Ruach, which Chol Vavah remains, is the fourth element, which was in the tree, Shoha'ofar, which is the offer, which is, exists in it, Hayyedet Lamata, which descends below, the fire does not consume it, as we know. You try lighting ash, it's not going to ignite. And it remains stubbornly the way it is, because fire does not dominate over ash. That remains. And in this case, even the message of the opposite, as we're going to see over here, the stark difference of the Nishama's appreciation on the high and the way the high is manifest on high, but nonetheless, you see the core will never go away. Every Yid has the ability to appreciate the unhigh, and that will never change, similar to the um, ash, which will never budge. Nothing is able to dominate. Even the strongest of fires never able, never able to dominate over the ash. It will always remain stubborn as an entity on its own, so too. The core of the Yid is always connected to the unhigh. Thus, it always has the ability to appreciate the unhigh. Every single Yid, without exception. But back to the message over here, or this part of the message, <coughs> which this is again the ash. <laughs> the entire image of the tree. It's mamashi, which means its tangibility, its palpability, the, 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 the tree itself, and its chumre, literally translated mundanity, which is the very fabric of the tree itself, the tsurasi, and its image. In its length and its breadth, in its thickness, would appear to the eye before it was consumed, before it was burned. Everything, the foundation of everything is from earth. That's why the offer dimension will never go away, because even the Eishmaim Ruach, which comprised this beautiful tree, or this beautiful tree was a combination and comprised from the Eish Ofer and Eish Ruch Mayim. Everything really is sourced in the Ofer. Like it says, HaKoyl Hoyomina Ofer. And it's indicative in the very beginning of Parshas Bereshis, when the Ebishter told of an other Marish. The indication is, and as the Rambam elaborates on this, in the same Hechus Yisayda Teira, that in the end of the day, the source of everything is Yisayda Ofer. That's the most potent Yisayd in the end of the day. That was the Yisaid, everything is from the Yisaid Afar. The entire tree, the length, the breadth, the thickness, the whole makeup of the tree, the Yisaid, the Yisaid, the foundation is offered. But the Eish Maim Ruach was cooling by what included in it, and that's where you found that glorious, if you will, image of the tree. And the simple reason, because what is more chaymer, what is more tangible <clears throat> from all of them is, of course, the earth. Nothing is as tangible and palpable <clears throat> as earth in comparison to even water. How much more so air? How much more so fire? Try to weigh air, weigh fire. Water has weight, but nonetheless, the 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 the. Offer is so much more chumris, they means they're much more palpable, much more stark in its makeup, much more than even water, how much more so than Ruach and then Eish. And that goes together with the fact that the say the foundation of everything is the offer. And the offer Yesh which offer has length, breadth, and thickness. You can say that there is. You can say how much the fire extended, how much the air extended, the wind blew in such a parameter. The fire extended and covered such a parameter as an example. But you cannot say that the fire itself has length and breadth and thickness. It doesn't. And so to Ruach, air, wind, as opposed, and he says, and even the water, which does have one way or another, you could kind of define the water more or <clears throat> place Eirech Verech of an Eidi in water, but nonetheless you can't compare it to the Afar, to the earth element and dimension of this makeup of the tree, which is comprised of Eishmaim Ruch Afar. And that's what he says, The water is just a very bit in the fire, 
and the and the tree, meaning to say what is the mere makeup of the tree? Because what is chomri yisur mikulon is afar in comparison to water in general. How much more so to ruach? How much more so to to age to fire? So when you look at the entire tree and you see that this tree has eirach v'reicha v'aivi, which means length and breadth and thickness, what is predominant? In the tree, of course, the offer, because the offer is the only element which starkly has this length, this breadth, and this thickness. So when you look at a tree which has that palpability, which has that image, which has that length, breadth, and, and thickness, that tells you that the offer is predominantly um, the main component of the tree. And only the Eish, Maim, Ruach, is cooling by, are included in the Yisait HaAfar. And he says even the water is just a bit in the, in, the, in the tree. It's damp, the water allows it to grow, but you ever touch a tree and you feel you're putting your hand into a cup of water? Or a container of water? Of course not. Because it's solid. Where's the water dimension? Yeah, it's damp. And a, tr- a damp tree is a healthy tree, of course. But predominantly, it's the Yisait HaOfer Shabbat, which, and, and everything else, is just minimal in this tree. In the end of the day, when it's consumed, you can't compare the ash, which is the Yisait offer, which is left over, to the full glory of the tree the way it was before. Of course you cannot. And that tells you that the Eish Maim Ruach plays an enormous <clears throat> play, so to say, in the development and the image of the tree. Understandably so. But in the end of the day, if you dissect it, even when it's standing in its full image and its full glory, what do you see predominantly? What could you identify and attest to predominantly? The Yisaita Afar, because the Afar is the most tangible of all, and it has length, breadth, and thickness, and that's where, that's the way we appreciate, that's the way we see and appreciate the tree. Because that's what it really is, ultimately. And the whole orki berach bebereivav, and all its length, breadth, and depth, <clears throat> or uh, and all its length, breadth, and depth, and thickness. That is hakalayim in offer. Everything is namely because of the earth dimension, the earth element, which exists within the tree, which is predominant as we can easily appreciate. The Bakoil, in the end of the day, when this, the tree is consumed, so what happens? A kill shovel off, or everything just returns to the to the earth. And in this case, Shehu Ha'efer, which is the Ash, Hanishar, which remains, after the elements of fire, water, air, has left the tree, what remains is the Ash. That's, Everything he says over here, that's simple science. The main part of the tree is you say, Dolph. That's why also it doesn't go away, because the others are just minimally in there, even though on the surface, whoa, the difference is so stark between the, the tree, the way it, it, it appears in its full image, to the way it is as ash after it's consumed. But in the end of the day, when it's in its full image, what do you identify time and again, predominantly? Of course, you identify the offer, because the offer is tang- the tangible of the four elements. And when you look at a tree, primarily the branch is a tangible branch, the leaf is a tangible leaf, and so is the fruit. So do you find an element of mind there? Understandably, you do. What about the Asian Ruach? Naturally, you do because that's the makeup of, of, of everything in Elam Hazas that, that Amam elaborates in Yisay Dateira from these four elements, Eishrach Maim Afar. But what do you see more evidently than all the other four? Which is, would, be, would be understandably the Afar. As the tree is primarily a tangible being, a tangible created being, every part of it. And therefore, because everything is the main, the main element of the offer. So after it's consumed, everything goes back to the offer, which in this case would be the A for the Ash Hanishar, which remains after Nifrudumimen Reish Maim Ruch, after the fire, water, air element, 
parts from it. That's what happens when something is burnt and consumed to ash. Chomz the al says, this is the meaning, this is what Abraham Avinu meant when he said, Anecha for Vaifer. When you look at the pile of ash, you see there's no comparison at all to the there's no comparison at all to the um the, to the um to the let's just see the al Tarebis, let's see the al Tarebis usage over here of the of the of the word because this is this this brings out this uh, the richness of Avraham Avinu's expression in the way the Al-Tareb explains Avraham Avinu's message. Jews like the ash. There's no comparison at all to the image of the tree, the grand tree, the great tree, as it literally translates, Hagadol, this great and grand tree, in its length and its and its breadth and in its length and its breadth and in its thickness, Kedem Shinisra, before it was burned. There's no comparison at all, nor in its quantity. You have a big tree, it takes up a lot of space. Now it's it it uh, it it's subdued or it's reduced. That is to a pile of ash. So in quantity, you can't compare the grandness of the tree to now reduce to just a small, significantly smaller the quantity of the makeup of the tree in that pile of ash. But how much more so? Not in its quality. Before it was a beautiful tree, especially a tree, a fruit tree, makes a statement, contributes so much in its image, and of course benefiting from the fruit. How could you compare the quality of a beautiful, healthy tree to the pile of ash? You can't. This ash, is it something different? Came out of nowhere after the tree was consumed? No, it did not. This is the core of the tree. Because this is the core makeup of the tree, even when the tree was alive. Even when the tree stood in its full image, in its full glory. What was the main component was the offer. So now the Afer, this is the very core of the tree, yet this is the paradox. This is the core of the tree. There's nothing else <clears throat> so strong <clears throat> within the tree, in other words, the state, which the, 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 the statement and the spirit that is of the tree, more than the afar, together with that, which at this point is the afar, is the ash, together with that, there is no comparison at all, nor quantitatively, nor qualitatively, to the way the tree looked before. And you see where the is going. Of course, the ability for the yid to be able to appreciate a lukus, <clears throat> this is who he is, this is who he or she is. This is the DNA of the Yid. He has a chelik of a kami mal mamush. <clears throat> and this is the core of every single Yid. But together with that, you cannot compare their appreciation of the realities of the Lukus, which they can understand it. We say appreciate and understand, meaning to say there a Yid could have a comprehensive understanding on the realities of a Lukus on high. And that's the basis of the positive. You die to Hayyeh. Mashem doesn't only say, Manta, you should believe, you should have knowledge. Knowledge, as Daramam writes in the end of Mishnah Teda, that a Yid could have, and especially when Mashiach comes, that window of Das will open up. Hashem, like the famous Pasik, for that matter, that's the way that Ramam concludes his magnum opus Mishnah Teda with that very Pasik, the land will be full with the knowledge of HaKadosh Baruch. But even till then, every Yid. And of course, now that we have Chassidus, and yes, Chassidus Chabad, which gives us the ability to have a true, comprehensive Yadaita Hayyim, Vashavesa Lubavecha. So it's predicated on the message of Teira. It's a mitzvah in Teira. Not only to believe and have this, so to say, peripheral uh, or super type of um, a general and peripheral understanding and connection to the Anhai, no, the Yadaita. And again, especially as the Alter Rebbe speaks in that the end of the third chapter of Lukot Yamarim, again, they click away the difference of Das and Chachma Bino. It's not only the information, it's the transformative ability <clears throat> or that cognitive faculty which brings transformation in one's appreciation <clears throat> based on the Chachma Bino, which is the information which sets a different level of clarity on the Anhai. 
But together with that, similar to this analogy, make no mistake, says Avram Avinu, the on high, the way it's a pre- the way it's it is in its domain on high, it's a total different area. Compare that of the beautiful tree to the very ash, which is the core of that very tree. As t- again, that's where the Eishmaim Ruach is developed from the Yisaita offer because offer. Again, you see the Yisaita, the Yisaita, the 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 Rambam says that everything really stems from the offer. It's the Yisaita in so many different ways. It's the foundation to the extent that everything is have the tree comes and mainly is connected to the offer dimension of it, and then the Eishroch Maim is embedded in it. Here the Alter Rebbe continues back to the Nimshul to the message. <laughs> this is Avraham Avinu Al Mashalim's message. Al Mido, Sim Mido, Sachas of Abba. His character, his Mido, his attribute of kindness, which is Ava, which is about his love. Hamiira Bay, which shines in Avraham Avinu Al Mashalim's Bukufi, and it's invested in the body of Avraham Avinu. Even Avraham Avinu is a live human being. That Avshi, he, in other words, a physical human being. And this is what we said many, many times. This is the message of the Alter Rebbe. In the third chapter, starting from the overall message in the second chapter, that every single year has a chelikali kamimal, a part of a kosh baruch within him, not when he's divested of body, up in Gan Eden. No, in the in the Avshilikis invests in the Nefesh Bahamis, in the body, the way the yid lives as a human being in this physical world. Which is so telling that, that the Yid, as he is, as a human being, is able to connect to on high. It's worth to see that chapter. The Altarabi gives all x-ray of, you look at that Yid, which is just exercising his own faculties, his own midas, of his own nefshalikis. Look at the levels he reaches, depicted in the Altarabi. And that's really pertinent to every Yid. By definition, if he has a chelik al kamimal, has esesfiris, so he has the ability to intellectualize the matters of godliness. His ability to emote with a Kodesh Baruch with a fervor passion, not just like a badge, I am an Ay Vashem or Ay Vashem, but real, like like the Ramam famously writes in the tenth chapter of Hilchus Chuva, I believe it is, <coughs> when he describes love the way we, the human being, or even the animalistic so the animal soul understands and appreciates love. There's passion to love. Nothing love is enormous, kind of an atomic pulling energy. And that's the way the Yid is able to love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And there he speaks about Yid Hashem, true awe, true reverence, not uh, Ye, Ye, Hashem, or this person, real fear, real reverence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's the Yid, the way he is, he or she is, a Neshama Biguf, invested in a body, this Neshama invested in a body, walking the face of Eilam Haza Gashmi, the physical Eilam uh, Haza, this very physical world. How much more so Avraham Avinu, that Avraham Avinu's midav chesed ba'ava, ha-mi'ira bay mulubash v'ashas b'kufay, even it's investing in his body. That even the core of Avraham Avinu's ava, of course, represents the ava on high, especially the way it comes so much to expression based on that Sefer Avoyer we mentioned before. Says Avraham Avinu, the afshu hu midas ava b'chesed alin shabbatzil, this is, the core of it is, of course. That's why the and, the, and this Al Tereba establishes this this analogy. In other words, this is analogous to the Afer. This is the core of the very tree. The Av of Ramavino is the core. It's not a substitute, something totally different. This is the core of Av of Atzilus. This is the core of Chesed Atzilus. As the Al Tereba he, as in the brackets over here, if you see at the beginning of Chuv Chabez, he, he, this is the Midas Av this is the Chesed Eli, not of Elam Asiya Ruchni, not of Elam Yitzira, not only of Elam Abriya, but of Atzilus, which again we mentioned so many times, Atzilus is a world which is not just a fourth in it. Again, it says there's many more, but general, it's generalized with the four Elam, Atzilus is not just the highest, it's a total different idea, it's a world that houses the Ein Sof, there's nothing, even on the most subtle level, anything which is not in the spirit of the Ain Sof of the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch As we spoke many times about Atzilus, and again, it's out there myriads and myriads of times everywhere. And this Mida, this Chesed and Ava, which is shown in Avraham Avinu's body, invested in Avraham Avinu's body, that is on core levels the Ava and the Chesed are in the Supreme Chesed, the Supreme Ava, which is in Atzilus. Supreme Chesed, again, which is the Ava, is the expression of Chesed, again, which shines in Atzilus, which is in Atzilus. 
And that of Meir bin Shmasa Shaisa Merkava El Yaina, which shines in Avraham Avinu's Neshama, especially particularly Avraham Avinu, which is a supreme a chariot to Akadosh Baruch Hu. As we mentioned again, you see it in the previous previous class. We say a chariot has no interest of its own, even if from a yid. I don't think we shouldn't repeat because we mentioned this Merkava so many times, but let's just do it very briefly. Even if from a yid, someone who does everything right, could you say that, that this person is a chariot to Akadosh Baruch Hu? Most of the from Yidin, I want to do this, I want to do this, but, I could, but I'm glad to do what Hashem wants, even a Yid, which is not sluggish in his service, in his, his or her service to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They're excited, they're motivated, but there's always, I'd rather do that, but no, I'm going to get up. I'm going to do what you want. And I'm going to conduct myself exactly the way you, Hashem, want me to conduct myself. I'm going to stay away from anything you don't want me to, but there's something within me, I'd rather do that, but no, I'm excited to do what you say. That's not the chariot. The, the rider hops onto the chariot. The chariot doesn't say, oh, you know, I really want to go left, but you want to go right. You're the rider and you have the reins, if it's a chariot connected to, to the classic, uh, classic, in other words, the classic makeup of the original chariots. People used to go from point A to point B. You have the reins and, yeah, you're probably, uh, you can be able to override me. No, that's not the chariot. The chariot doesn't have any opinion or nor any interest or any motivation to go any other direction other where the rider wants to go. Actually, the car would also be something which we can appreciate, even though the car sometimes, it uh, if you don't you know control it, it, you ha it, it, in other words, there's a clear distinction. The chariot is much more accurate because the chariot it's a one hundred percent subservient to the rider. These were the obvious again elaborated in different places <clears throat> about the. It's a great tzaddikim, primarily of Rami Tzavi Yaakov. Classically, they would be the chariot, Meishu Rabbeinu, and again, all the others, they're Merkav Tokadosh Baruch Hu. The rider, which of course would be Hashem, they are so subservient, they have no other desire of their own. No, none, zilch, nothing. It's all about what do you, Hashem, want. Of course, that's stupendous, it's very grand. This was of Ramavinu. So when of Ramavinu had this Mid of Av and Chesed Elyin, that was the Chesed Elyon of Atzilus. Comes Avram Avinu and says that Afal became Beridosu Lamatu Slavish Begufu. Nonetheless, when it descends below to invest in his body, through the evolution of worlds from one level to the other, with many contractions, which again, I'm saying this generically because we spoke about this idea and we can understand it on its own, the great contractions for which is part of the evolution of the unhigh to below to the very below of Elam Haza, which is just a pure result of the greatest tzimtzumim which we could ever think of. <laughs> we don't need to think so far. A world which, uh, the, which, 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 which obscures the reality of Elam Haza on its own, of course, pre the Avaidah the Yid, which his, and her Avaidah is to bring Emes Hashem La'elam to reveal that this world is also a mere production of a Kodesh Baruch but on its own. Need not to elaborate. So, of course, it comes to many contractions, but exists in all the elements from the level of Atsilas, the many, the evolution, many a world from one level to the other through these many contractions, says Avraham Avinu, and Avraham Avinu's message, rather, that is, there's no comparison to the light of the love which shines in Avraham Avinu, to the light of love and supreme kindness, the way it's on Atsilas, the way it's on high. And if you again want to know how different, how distinct it is, like the Afar dimension within the healthy tree prior to it being consumed, in comparison, which is the significant majority of the tree, in comparison to the Afar, to the ash, I'm sorry, Ki'erech V'dimian, say better, Mohusa Afar, yes, the Mohusa Afar, which was the significant majority of the tree when the tree was alive and well. And Shinasa Afar, to where it became ash, which again, after the fire, what remains is that very core of offer, which is the ash, which is the offer element of the four elements, which make up, which comprise the tree. Compare that, El Mahuse to the quantity and quality of the tree, when it was so beautiful to even to the appearance, and the Teig how beautiful it is, how good it is for the consumption of its beautiful fruits, Al Derech is there any comparison? No, there isn't. 
But there isn't. Look at the tree and look what, when it's reduced to ash. The ash is the core. Yes, it is. And that's the paradox. The ash is the core of the very offer, which is a significant makeup of the tree. Avraham Avinu's Ava and Chesed was the Chesed Elion of Atzilus. But the way the manifestation of Ava, the re- revelation of the Ava in Avram's system, which was again full fledged Chesed, full fledged lover of Akadish Baruch, Hu, Avram is called Avram Oyhavi. Like nobody else loved Akadish Baruch, Hu, like Avram Avinu. And it's in full expression, full manifestation. But Avram Avinu says, You cannot compare to the way the expression, the full expression, manifestation of the Av and the Chesed Elyon, to the way it's on high. You want to know a little of the difference? Look at the difference of the Ofer, which was reduced to Afer, to the Ash, in comparison to the image and the glor- glorified, the, the glorified image of the tree. Now, Tereba concludes over here, we'll... Uh, we'll, we'll conclude this class over here. The Alter Rebbe says that's the analogy you can give in Elam Hazar, the way Elam Hazar is, which is a stark difference. What we as human beings can appreciate the difference between the two. But make no mistake, it doesn't stop there. The Yesim is the Havda Balof Mabdolis, in tens of thousands of differences. The difference of, a, of, of, of literally translates separations, meaning to say, you see that stark difference? It Multiply that by thousands of folds. <laughs> and that's grand. But we can't really describe the thousands of folds. We use something that is something that we as human beings could distinguish and see the stark difference between the two. That already tells us, yeah, the difference is very great, very vast. Together with that, we have to know that that's just a muscle because we can't see more, but it's way thousands of thousands of, of folds over. Taita would use Taita, which is again, Taita expresses this Avram Avinu's expression, and this was the message of Avram Avinu. And Taita, which is a Lashon Hira, tells us how the Neshama expresses itself down here vis a vis in comparison to the way it's on high. Taita would use a Lashon with a, an analogy, a metaphor, which is something that we as human beings could appreciate, but it's way grander. The, the difference is, it doesn't say one or two folds, alofim, thousands of folds over this very example. Yeah, that's very, very distinct and different. Together with that, and this, we're just going to conclude this over here, because the message in the end of the day, together with that, the core of the neshama, the core of the midas of the, of the yid, because he has a chilka l'kami mal mamash, on core levels, that's the same as the the Svitas of the Avatsilas. And therefore, the significant majority of the Al Tareb is paid over here. After setting, establishing this establishment, that make no mistake, as we just explained, in the end of the day, do we have the Chelik of Kamimal? Yes, we do. Do we have the entire Svitas? <clears throat> in other words, the makeup of the Neshama as it's evolved from the, as it evolves from the Anhai, like the Al Tareb writes in the third chapter of Kuti Amorim, and <clears throat> accentuates the message over here. The answer is yes, and therefore, namely, the Alter Rebbe is going to set aside the significant majority of the chapter, how we, in the end of the day, can appreciate the Anhai ultimately. Is it on the same level of Atzilus? Of course not. But can we have the Yadaita clarity on the Anhai, on the realities of Alakus? The answer is yes, and yes again, for everything we just explained. And therefore, we have to exercise and do whatever we can to fulfill this very pasuk. The yadaita hayim, yadaita. We can have clarity. We can have real knowledge on the Hashem Olikim and matters of the deepest levels within Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And therefore, we're meant to make the effort on a constant basis. Yidias Hashem. And when we invest, and we know the DNA of the yid is again, we have the head start because this is who we are. That enables enables us to. <clears throat> make it real and implement this mitzvah on a constant basis. And when a person serves a Kodesh Baruch Hu, based in his clarity and his Yediyas Hashem, in which gives birth to love and fear of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the, 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 and becomes in the end of the day, one way or another, passionate with Hashem, emotes with Hashem with all these different midas, it's a different quality of Avedis Hashem. And that's what the Ebishter wants with that mitzvah, V'yadayta Hayayim. When a Yid has that clarity, Yikei Hashem Alikim, it's a different ballgame in his or her service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even though in the end of the day Hashem wants us, yes, 
from a certain perspective, and a great perspective and point of view, to be the yes men, to have Kabbalah sail, to accept the yoke of HaKadosh Baruch Hashem in the end of the day is a king, and he's not only a king, he's Melech, Malachi, Hamlachim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he's a king of all kings, and he's not your buddy, and therefore, yes, we submit ourselves 100% in our thoughts, in our speech, and our action, which the significant majority of Torah Mitzvah is about doing what we're meant to do and staying away with Hashem says not to do. But together with that, when we utilize our rich faculties based on who we are, as a part of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, it's a different type of Avedis Hashem, understandably so. Have a wonderful day.